slide. That's why I'm taking the trouble to do it. All right. So this I am going to look at as a subspace of the, 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 the ordinary visual value that we talked about earlier. Okay. So there's this neighborhood basis. Blah blah blah. We know how to topologize it. So we're going to topologize this as a subspace. So we're going to view this with the subspace topology. Okay. But now I'm going to topologize this thing as the direct limit topology of these. So we're going to take the direct limit of D. All right, what does that mean? That means, what's the direct limit topology? Something's open in here if and only if its intersection with each one of these is open. All right, if and only if its intersection with each one of these is open. Now, it's not hard to check that this topology is much finer than just taking the subspace topology. There are things that converge in the subspace topology that don't converge in this. So, so let me, um, so, so this is, um, so direct limit topology. Okay, so uh, let me um, observe um, um, this, this finer uh, a lot than um, subspace. So this is a remark. This topology is finer than the subspace topology. And here's an easy example, um, or an easy way to see this. So here's my alpha, and it's, say, decontracting. So it's a point in my, so it's a point in my, in my space. All right. But now I take a bunch of betas that run along it for a little while and then head off in some other direction, beta 1, and maybe beta 2, and beta 3, but they stay with it longer and longer, right? Yep, da, 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 da. okay? Well, in the subspace topology, in the topology on the, on the, on the visual topology, these clearly converge. Right? The beta i's converge to alpha, right? By definition, they stay with it longer and longer and longer, so they're converging. But if beta i is di contracting with di going to infinity, then the intersection with any one of these is finite, and this, this set is already closed. This set of betas is already closed and does not converge to alpha. It does not converge because it's contracting constants are going on in the check. Right. It's already closed. So. So that's the kind of thing that happens. We not only need that they stay longer and longer, we need that they they're, that their contracting houses are, are controlled. Don't go off in the bit in order to get convergence. Right, so it's a so it's quite a quite a bit finer topology. Um, so so the answer is these converge in the subspace topology, but not in the in this in this new direct limit topology. Okay, so just keep that in mind that the topologies are different. Um, Okay, so let's see. Um, what did I want to say here? Yeah, okay, so, um, so this is our idea. Our idea was if we only allowed uh, things which are worse or contracting, then maybe this boundary would behave more like a hyperbolic boundary. And that's what I want to talk about, but first I do want to mention the generalization. So I only did this for um, 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 cat zero spaces. Um, what, what, what Matt Cordes has done is said, well, if instead of contracting, we use Morse here, we could do this for arbitrary geodesic metric space. All right? We could do the same thing using the Morse property. You need the Morse property to guarantee. So, but things get a little more complicated because you don't even have a boundary to make this a subspace of anymore. This is the reason I'm doing, I wanted to restrict to this case. It's much easier to see what's going on here because we have something to sit it in. So in order to generalize this to an arbitrary geodesic metric space, you not only need the Morse property, but you need to first define the topology on this using some kind of neighborhood basis properties and then pass to the direct limit. So you could actually do this. I, I'm not going to be using it uh, much in this talk, but I will just mention it and Matt will be talking about it. So, um,
proper, sorry, proper fetus. is not only is it harder to say what the pathology is here, but also these now become functions, not constants, and they still have an ordering, and somehow it's easier to think of to just have a constant that gets big, and it's, it's just a little easier to visualize than the contract. But it works perfectly well in places with most and do the same way. Okay, okay so, um, so that's just a comment. All right, so now we have this boundary. Like the and we wonder what does it do for us? Well, the whole point was to um, get better behavior. So let's ask, what kind of properties do we have? Well, I'll just erase them. <laughs> but let's, let's uh, look at our properties and say, um, what properties does this satisfy? So there are, okay, and actually let me state it. I'm going to mention some of um, Matt's results here. So theorem, um, let um, x, first of all, be a proper genus of metric space. Um, then, that was the X. The most value of X satisfies um, um, one. The most important, quasi asymmetry. That's a, that was our goal. So um, um, I'll just say QI and variance. So I can have mean. Same thing I had before, namely given a quasi isometry between two spaces, it induces a homeomorphism on the Morse boundaries. All right. This um, was proved by him, uh, with myself and Sultan um, for cat zero case, and generalized um, by Matt for this to the more general to the more general set. Okay. So um, two visibility. Given any two points in the boundary, there is this on the force boundary, there is this divide into the geodesic that connects one to the other. Okay, that works. It's same time. Yeah. And then for that QI invariance works even with the subspace topology in the cat zero session? No, well, I'll get to that. <laughs> it, we, I'll get to that. Okay. All right, come back. All right. All right. Um, and three, um, it satisfies if you have, um, okay, this is the work of, um, of my student, Devin Murray. I'm just going to mention, he's been working on all kinds of interesting questions about um, um, dynamical questions. So um, he's been looking at the case um, where you have x is cat zero and um, g acts on x um, um, geometrically. So you have a couple of half loop action. Um, and um, he's proven various dynamical properties such as, such as so if we have an action, then, it, then in an obvious way it induces an action on the boundary. So he shows that um, um, the action of G on the boundary X um, um, has transorbits. Oh, I'm assuming something here. Um, I should say. We need that, we need, for these theorems, I need that the boundary has at least three there's some element. It's not elementary. So let me just say um, not not elementary. So so if you throw out a few cases of, of boundary of one point two points, and then and then all of this works. So um, dense orbits. Um, uh, a very he's proved a very strong form of north south dynamics, which I won't write up. Um, I won't write out. But um, let me just say it was already known if you have a. Um, North South dynamics along the axis of hyperbolic elements. That was um, Hammerstein, various people have, have proved that. He also looks at the case where you have any sequence of, of um, group elements going towards a point on the boundary, not necessarily periodic, um, and, and proves a form of North South dynamics. Not only that, because North South dynamics is not in terms of the subspace topology, it's in terms of the intrinsic topology on, the, on, the, on this in the space, which is much finer. So he proves a north-south dynamics that's, that's um, intrinsic to the to the um, to the Morse boundary. One of the reasons, by the way, I think that's interesting. So in the case of cat zero, maybe it doesn't say that much new, but we are pretty sure a lot of these things are going to generalize to the to the 
dropping the cat zero. You know, we'd like to generalize a lot of these things past cat zero, and for that, we want everything to be intrinsic. We don't want to, you know, use the existence of some bigger boundary, which doesn't even exist in the general case. So we're trying to do everything intrinsically in this boundary. So he has this nice little set of dynamics that's very strong and uses only the topology of the boundary itself. So I think it's quite nice. Um, okay, so that's, um, so that's um, you know, uh, hopefully, I mean, um, suggests that this is a, a nice, useful um, object to, to, to um, play with. And one might uh, um, do the sorts of things one wanted with, um, uh, one does with hyperbolic properties. <coughs> I mean, for example, we've already uh, produced some examples of right angle constant groups where you can distinguish the quasi isometry class by showing that the boundaries are not homomorphic. So that's sort of that sort of argument that you can use it for, for something like that. Okay, but um, let me say that um, this is the good news. All right, we'll, we'll do a morning This is the good news. Is a, is a half a line, you know? 
So just by definition of the topology. So what actually works with these guys, not with these guys when you're doing a proof. All right? So, so it, okay, so the topology is nasty here, but it's nice here and it's easy to work with. All right? So, so it's not really so bad. But really, a better answer, we in fact in our first paper left an open question, is the quasi isometry invariance true if we use a subspace problem? We did not know, we just did not approve it. All right? There's a recent paper by Chris Cowley, um, um, boundary star with subspace topology is not
Um, um, it's, it, sorry. No, I just thought you wrote that. This is, this is done by rockets, and now I'd like to say, what I'd like to do is replace this by path zero, and this by that we star, and you know, say that you can do the same thing in our, in, in our situation. That's, a, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Um, so, um, so quasi Mobius, you first define the, the, what's called the um, cross ratio uh, uh, for uh, points x, x prime, y, y prime, and x. Here, so I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna wave my hands in a few places. Um, it's um, um, one half um, the distance from x to y plus the distance from x prime. Uh, oh, wait a minute, I'm gonna get this backwards. Um, um, no, let's do x to x prime. Not that it matters, but I want to be consistent with what I'm putting here. So y to y prime uh, minus the distance from x uh, to uh, y prime. So um, in, if you do this in a tree, you have four points, x, um, x prime, y, y prime, you're taking this plus this minus this minus this and dividing in half, you get exactly this one. Exactly that one if you do that in a tree. Okay, and now hyperbolic is almost like this, you know, close, uh, like, what is it? Some sort of like that. Estimating, putting an estimate on this letter. All right? Okay, so um, all right, so then it turns out you can define, um, you then, um, Paulin then defines the cross ratio on the boundary by taking, by simply, so he wants to do the same thing, alpha, alpha prime, beta, beta prime. Um, I mean, one can use a metric, but I don't want to use a metric because ours isn't metrized. But um, you can define the cross ratio on the boundary by looking at sequences of x, x is, x i is the go to this, x i prime is the go to this, y i is the go to this, and y i prime is the go to this, and taking the limit of these guts. Okay, so you know, there's some limits to the limit, you know, whatever. I, I don't have that. But you can take the limit of, of these as they go to infinity. Okay, so we can extend, I'll just say, can be extended. Um, to a cross to a cross ratio on that, all right, in a natural way. All right. So um, um, two minutes and I'm done. Um, so we have this cross ratio, and then Pythagoras uh, is the following. So 
So, um, um, so uh, generalize.